Before we get into operations and filters, we really need to discuss data sources. Data sources are tools that can be used to store or create numerical values for other tools and objects to use. Some data sources use mathematics, but don't worry, you don't need to be a math genius to use them. We will get into some uses for these tools in later tutorials as we cover operations, filters, and creating skill games, but I will include a basic example here as well. First though, I'd like to discuss the different types of data sources. Our first data source is the curve data source. This tool can change from one value to another over a set amount of time. Let's peep those properties to see what I'm talking about. To begin, let's skip down a couple options to start and end. These are where you set the two values the data source will switch between. Below them is duration. This is how long the change will take. So for example, if your start value is zero and your end value is 60, and your duration is one minute, each second, the value will increase by one. Keep in mind though that the value is still changing every tick. The change doesn't have to be a linear one. If we jump back up, we have the curve setting. This affects the speed of the change. There are too many options here to discuss them all, but there are some great resources online that have visual examples of each type of curve. We will share a link to one in the video description. Just for a quick example, let's say we set it to quadratic ease in and out. Now instead of going from 1 to 60 at an even pace, the change will begin slowly, then speed up in the middle, then slow down again as it reaches the end. Offset ticks is an option we've seen before in the triggers tutorial. This is based on the game clock and determines when the change starts. The looping checkbox will loop the data source so that it runs continuously. Now, when we reach one minute, the value will become zero again and start all over. The invert second half checkbox will make your change take half the time, and then during the second half, it will reverse back to the start. So now, using our same example, it'll only take 30 seconds to go from zero to 60. Then the second 30 seconds, it will go from 60 back to zero. Reset when disabled will reset the data source if you use a state event to disable it. Enabling and disabling this tool with a state event comes in handy if you want to trigger the change instead of having it based on the game clock. And finally, reset and checkpoint restart of course resets the data source when the rider resets to a checkpoint. Next we have the game variable data source. This one uses various in-game sources to get its value. In the properties we have one main option, type. This is where you choose what the data source uses to get its value. You'll notice with type highlighted, you get some text on the right hand side of the screen. This gives you some important info as to what the numerical values associated with each setting are. When the type is set to any of the options that use the controller, you also get a slider to choose which controller it gets the value from. For trials tracks, you will always be using main, but it is possible to create local multiplayer skill games for which this will be an invaluable tool. The object info data source uses info like position, rotation, speed, or direction of an object to get its value. We only have two options in this property menu. Select object is of course how you choose the object you want to use, and type determines what aspect of the object you want to use as your value. As you can see there are quite a few options, so we don't have time to explain them all, but I'll try to quickly run through. Position, angle, direction, side, and up, x, y, and z values all use the position and orientation of an object in the game world to get the value. Applied force calculates the amount of force being applied to the object. Hit points is of course the number of hit points the object has. Velocity and angular velocity, x, y, and z use the speed of the object or the speed of its rotation on a single axis, while speed simply calculates the object's overall speed. Driving line position of course uses the object's position on the driving line. Next we'll look at the random data source. This one will generate random numbers between two set values at a set interval of the user's choice. Where do we go from here? To the properties of course. Min and max are the two values between which all of your random values will be, and duration will set how often the data source produces a new value. Reseed and seed both have to do with how the data source generates the random values. Technically, you could say that the numbers are not truly random, as the data source uses a mathematical algorithm to produce the values. For this tool, it looks at the minimum and maximum values, as well as the seed value. As a result, two random data sources with the same minimum, maximum, and seed values will always produce the same values. If you want to get truly random values, you can change the seed value while the game is running, which we will discuss how to do in just a moment. 
finally, we have the variable data source. Basically, this one simply holds one number, not much math involved. Of course, as we touched upon in the events tutorial, you can change the value using the set value event, and that will come into play as we check out the properties. Our first option is value. This is where you set the value the data source will have at the start of the game. If you adjust the value using the set value event, reset and checkpoint restart will reset it back to the initial number you had set. The interpolate checkbox will open up some new options and also has to do with how the data source reacts when the value is changed. On a basic level, this function is similar to those of the curved data source. With interpolation checked, the number will not abruptly change to the new value but instead will gradually change over time depending on the following settings. Interpolation type is similar to the curve data source, but here you only get two options. Exponential is similar to the curve example I used earlier, a smoother transition than linear, which is a straight change at even speed. Interpolation speed of course sets how quickly the number will change. And finally, max step sets the maximum value the number can change each tick. So for example, if max step is set to 1, then each tick the value will only go up by 1, increasing or decreasing the value by 60 each second. Now that's all the data sources, but perhaps you're thinking to yourself, what the heck am I supposed to do with them? As I mentioned earlier, we will discuss some uses in coming lessons, but for now there is one main thing you need to know, and this is really going to open up the possibilities of what you can do. Just about any option in any properties menu that uses a value, checkbox, or notch slider can be tied to a data source, allowing you to change it during gameplay. If it is a value, of course the value in the properties will simply match the value in the data source. If it is a checkbox, a value of 0 in the data source equals unchecked, while a value of 1 or higher will equal checked. If it's a notch slider, then the first notch will be 0, and each notch after will be 1 higher. So for example, if your slider has 4 notches, they will be valued 0 through 3. Now I'll quickly show one example that I've used quite a few times, creating a zoom effect on a camera by tying the field of view to a curved data source. I've set up my example by placing a camera at the start of the level, targeted to the rider and set as the game camera. I've also already placed my curved data source and set its values. Just to quickly show you, my start value is 57, the default field of view setting on the camera. My end value is 10, and my duration is set to 3 seconds. Now I'll open my camera properties and scroll down the FOV. A press of the Y button brings up my cursor so I can select my value target. For now we've only discussed data sources, but operations can also be used as value targets. Now when I test the track, we should see a wide camera view that zooms in for a closer look at my rider. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what can be done with data sources, and just how powerful this tool can be. Now fire up those editors and show me what kind of awesome stuff you can come up with.